So guys, um, we have today the founders of uh, Finvasia to the to buy talk show. Welcome. Thank you very much. Pleasure being here. You are one of the leaders, I would say, in in whole Asia, or I mean, in India, you're definitely number one. You're one of the first ones in India, or no? Depends what industry you're talking about, because uh, uh, the different industries within Malaysia that we operate in real estate is more India, financial services is global, healthcare is North America and India, and uh, you know so on and so forth. Okay, let's talk about uh, forex. This is something that. Uh, you know, you've been uh, visiting Dubai, you've had some uh, trade shows promoting some of your brands uh, over the last uh, one year in Dubai, quite actively. Um, so tell us more about your development in Forex. Uh, Forex is part of our what we call financial intermediation. Uh, it's one of the types of financial intermediation that we have forex uh, we have uh, stocks bonds options the all of that sort of in the mix within the finnesia ecosystem uh what we call it as the finnesia financial intermediation division is is it truly uh no commission i've been reading about this and trying to understand so how, how do you make money if you don't charge commission okay so for that i think we have to take two steps back and that kind of goes back to uh, the way we started. Uh, so, you know, we are next Wall Street bankers, the gender, you know, being in U.S. for all the years. Uh, we ventured in different verticals and financial services was one of that. So we moved to India initially and we were investing in global markets. Uh, and then we kind of moved in the space that what's the problem statement? And financial services have a vested interest where, you know, the middlemen always tried more than the actual investors. So we kind of took the entire chain out and we created a commission-free ecosystem, which is where the ethos is that we wanted to find a problem statement. We're an engineering company and that's what we keep coming back. So in, in 2008, you were in North America during the crisis or, or where, when did you start the company? We were for uh, 2008 uh, during the crisis. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I was managing money for uh, Fortis Bank back then. Our portfolio was about $1.6 billion uh, in global uh, equity markets, and we were one of the most uh, successful uh, uh, prop trading groups with Fortis at that point. Uh, but, um, and that's how Finisha also started. We started as a wealth management company, uh, as someone was going to uh, you know, manage wealth for uh, hedge funds, uh, asset management firms. And uh, I think that the itch of being an engineer always brings you back to, you know, what can you teach? What can get better? And that's when uh, we got into, you know, the retail division and we saw the uh, things that could be changed better. And like Sarajit said before, if you think about finance as an industry, this is the only industry in the world where the raw material and the end product is the same. It's money. You put in money as a raw material, you take money as the end product. The only difference is how much does it grow by from the raw material to the end product. And when you put commissions into it, you almost, you know, are working against the product's uh, basic guidelines of increasing the raw material. Hmm, that that's very interesting. So so essentially, how 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 do you make money? I mean, you you, you have more raw material. And you need the best. <laughs> it becomes more lucrative, you know, for customers to to join. And and what, what's approximately the the ratio? Let's say um, institutional to or to retail customers. Like how, how would you put it percentage wise? It's very really difficult to put them uh, in percentages because institutional customers are very very large. What institutional customer could be worth ten thousand retail customers? So in terms of absolute numbers. Uh, uh, you know, it, it would not be an apple to apple uh, comparison, but uh, we, Sarujit can give better numbers uh, in terms of uh, how we stack up in terms of volumes and things like that in India. So yeah, I think we've, as I said, focusing on retail and institutional both. Uh, you know, the growth has been quite exciting for us, and even as uh, the disruption for being. Uh, the India's first commission-free, uh, you know, investment uh, app. It's kind of 
created a, a perfect win-win for everyone, you know, for the investors, for us as a business. And as I said, you know, the brokerage is, is always an excellent service, right? It's never a true revenue or a business model. It's just it has been developed over a period of time that it got to this space. Otherwise, if you really look at uh, it's it's against the you know the essence of being in business uh, commissions. You you've seen how the middleman has always been a trouble child. Then you more invents. So if I tell you that buy this car, and unless I have a target, I will not tell you that which one is better. And sometimes the electric vehicles are better than the gas vehicles. So I think that that onus of taking the middleman out was the primary reason we we built this whole concept of commission free trading. Uh, and from there, I think there's been no looking back, and it's it's been a great journey for all of us. Was it a thing in the in the US and in Canada as well? Robinhood have been quite promoting the commission-free uh, structure. That's right. Yeah, uh, I, I think the uh, Robinhood uh, has done a good job in creating a commission a commission-free air ecosystem in the US. Uh, different business models. Uh, and different uh, uh, scope of product. Uh, at Phoenicia, uh, we not only uh, within Phoenicia the uh, the app which is Shunya, which is one of the Phoenicia product, which is zero commission. It's zero commission, zero clearing, zero technology fees. Yeah. So essentially, the whole food chain is zero hosted. Mm-hmm. So it's not just brokerage that's zero. Very exciting. How many customers are using uh, your financial services at the moment? Globally or uh, just India? Globally, let's look. We're talking about a few million people. Okay, and recently you you grew quite quickly when you acquired you know a few more companies. There was in in Cyprus, there was in Greece, you know, and several uh, companies. Tell us more about that. Okay, so. I think the journey again, as I said, uh, started in US, went back to India, and from India we are uh, very uh, strategically investing and diversifying globally. Um, and in that particular case, you're right, we've invested in uh, different different companies. So uh, I think Tejinder can really help on the Zulu trade side and um, for the other global markets too. I guess it was very, uh, uh, you know, obvious. Uh, so, if I say what is Phoenician, Phoenician is not the uh, uh, okay. We have a large financial services division, uh, which is more, uh, you know, which has gained a lot of media attention recently. Uh, but Phoenician is an engineering company with the itch to keep on going into the verticals uh, that we can look at and we can redefine what's happening over there. At some point, we thought inorganic growth would be better. Uh, and at some point, we thought organic is better. And we really felt inorganic is better, we started acquiring uh, companies. For example, we acquired Zulu Trade, which is the biggest social network in the world uh, for investments and trading. Uh, it's the oldest and the biggest uh, broker agnostic, platform agnostic, uh, you know, tens of thousands of traders sh- sharing their trades and, you know, millions of followers following their trades. Uh, Act Trader, another acquisition we did, it's the oldest fintech or it's, uh, it's one of the oldest fintechs in the world, it started building fintech products when the word fintech was not even famous. Yeah, back in 2002, Actrader built its first mobile trading application when people were still using GPRS on their mobiles. Um, you know, and then if you look at the organic, uh, the organically uh, built stuff like Capital Wallet, uh, uh, Block, uh, you know, Blockmiss, another product we're working on, uh, Body New. So we've building this micro device that would go into a person's body and uh, can track his uh, uh, biological uh, you know, markers on a real-time basis. For example, people who have diabetes, they don't have to break their fingers, they could just scan their water at all. You know. So it's really the itch and building what we can build and then maybe acquiring some where we can very need to to complete the ecosystem. I've been um watching uh, your social media, you've been having some kind of uh, stretching with it say kind of health uh, uh, tell us more about the, the health brand. So I think uh, I think you always have days in life where you know things kind of excite you uh, and that's exactly what happened. So back in I think school college days you 
try to, you know, be the, the, the super cool guy. And, you know, it just kind of started off by being, working out more often. And over a period of time, it just stays in your body. So yeah, I, uh, you know, I, I try to spend more time doing justice to my body at the time. And I have no, not, not building muscle. Well, I, I think we, we've fairly done a good job. Uh, you know, it's hard to give more time to a lot of things. As long as, and I think that's, that's something we have to remind ourselves. Your body needs a consistent uh, energy. You know, it, it has to be good. It doesn't have to be popped up every day. So even if you give 40 minutes to your body a day, that's it. Over over above is, is more of for pro. And I think with so many things around, we've, we've been fairly good on, on keeping that activity. And I you think, exercise more than him? Yeah, so I would tell you. Out of them, then. And I, I think you're also the, the fashion brother because, you know, yeah. <laughs> for past yeah. figure pictures, certain uh, ties and certain kind of, you know. <laughs> And it comes with the nature of work, right? I mean, you, you kind of dress up and then you, you like dressing up, right? I mean, I think it just just comes that way. So, yeah, I think that's true. Yeah, I mean, if we have two different personalities, which is very helpful, uh, you know, it's complementing each other a large. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I, I think that's one of our biggest strengths as well. Uh, because uh, sometimes people come and ask me that, uh, uh, you know, Phoenicia has more than a dozen brands under it, uh, which have, uh, we operate in, or we service clients in over 190 countries. Uh, and they're like, how are you doing healthcare and technology and finance and real estate and all this together? And uh, I feel that because uh, uh, one, obviously a very strong team at the, uh, uh, you know, at the management level, plus uh, the complementing, uh, uh, you know, uh, personalities that we have uh, helped us. Uh, to maintain the balances uh, and basically, uh, you know, try to burn the ocean uh, in some cases. I, th I think you, you stick together all the time. Even for the interview, I was trying to separate <laughs> just to get one of you. But he uh, insisted. I, I think you know, it, it, there's, there's no conscious effort like that. I think we kind of know, uh, you know, uh, what's our strength and weakness. And I think that's what we keep talking to ourselves. You know, um, I I don't know what he's, you know, what he does because he's so good with numbers. You know, he's like the guy and I, he doesn't care what I do because I'm more of a business guy, I sit down. So it works pretty well for us. I mean, it, and, and that's how you come this way. That makes sense. Uh, actually, um, I, I I saw you on, um, I was, I was in one of the trade shows, I think recently in January. So I had like two options. I was like, should I talk to the founder of Invasia or should I have this amazing chocolate sweet Invasia <laughs> branded? So I started eating and then by the time I turned around, you had left. <laughs> <laughs> so you bring the choice. <laughs> well, we met for a right? So we met today. Oh, yeah, 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 it's yeah. better late, but that's worth it. Uh, it's good. So at least people are liking the chocolates. I that they were very generous, by the way. I mean, it is, this is like a big box. It has like 12 different like high-end sweets and the whole branding, all the stands, all these different brands, you know. I mean, it was very strong, you know. Tomorrow you're attending the, the, the summit, the FinTech summit. The summit. Uh, yes. What's, uh, what's the agenda there? Uh, so, again, part of it is... Uh to share more about what we are doing. Um, but one of the um, interesting uh, element we want to bring tomorrow is we're going to do a, a soft launch for our uh, Neobank app, which we are planning to introduce in India. So it's more of a digital uh, bank app and it's, it's to begin with focus for the Indian clients. And we want to do a quick Soft launch tomorrow. So that's one of the exciting uh, things we have in mind. Uh, and then again, I, you know, a lot to meet and interact with the people with a similar industry and background. Uh, because if you really look at it, you know, there's so much coming up in the whole fintech world. Uh, you know, the whole AI side, 
um, the whole uh, Web 3.0. So I think a lot of tech is also building up. So we would be sharing, um, you know, some of our future plans, some of our future products, which are in pipeline, uh, the one I just told you. And besides that, I think uh, there's another uh, product which we are working for the European market, which is again, almost there it just just the regulatory space takes more time because it's very compliance driven it's it's money right so everybody is very conscious of so look now your website there is there is a bunch of different flags bunch of different like regulators bunch of different license numbers permissions and you know, etc <laughs> it's all very uh transparent you know for everyone to, to see um, this um, Neo, Neo Bank, uh, are you planning to offer some interest rates like saving accounts and etc? Because I know, I know Indians like to save. <laughs> I, I think it's also becoming a global phenomenon that the recent increase in interest rate all over the world. Yeah. Because if you look at it traditionally, uh, Europe uh, had zero interest rate and the US had you know almost close to zero interest rates. Uh, so there wasn't really a, uh, an interest bearing product uh, which was meaningful. So these are cycles, interest rate cycles. As interest rate goes up or down in given countries, uh, there are only four things people can invest in at a broader perspective. You can invest in bonds, including fixed deposits. You could invest in stock markets, including, you know, uh, all different types of stocks and, uh, you know, uh, things, uh, mutual funds and things like that. You could invest in real estate or you could invest in precious metals. Outside of these four, there isn't much that is left for investments. So the, re, the the investment cycle of any individual goes among these four macro channels as the economic cycle changes. A few years ago, nobody was talking about interest rate. You know. uh, outside of your company, where do you invest? Uh, we do like to support where we can uh, in terms of innovation. Uh, I believe... Uh, we are an engineering company and our focus is to build knowledge and build, uh, uh, you know, products for tomorrow. Uh, look at the orthodox uh, in traditional businesses and see how can we disrupt it? How can we uh, change them? So whether it's healthcare, like I told you before, within healthcare, there are different products you're working on. One of our product is uh, focused on uh, diabetes remission. Uh, so when I mean diabetes remission, I mean, let's say, for example, someone who has diabetes, can he, uh, without having medication, control his blood glucose level and be being, be, we have more than, I, I don't have the exact numbers, but more than 60 or 70% of the cases uh, that we saw over the last one year at our facility in India, uh, we've been able to achieve that feat. Uh, and uh, it motivates us that, uh, uh, you know, can we combine, can we bring engineering into, in this case, into medical sciences? and uh, change how medical sciences or how doctors operate and how they work. You know, if you look at across the world, the average doctor available per, uh, for every thousand people who need it is so low right now. If you don't bring engineers into it and you just try to bring more doctors, it'll take you at least 30 more years. Because to become a doctor, you have to go through pedal. A bachelor's, uh, doc, postdoc, and specializations and things like that. So, can we somehow revolutionize that? If I look at it, 20 years ago, when I became an engineer, or 25 years ago, um, to become an engineer, you have to go to an engineering college, get a degree, and then become an engineer. Nowadays, we have a 13-year-old guy becoming an engineer and working at Google or Amazon. Why can't we have the same thing what, when you were a kid, what kind of TV series you used to watch? Uh, you had some uh, doctors for lawyers, for finance guys. What, what, what was your favorite? I, I used to watch. Uh, I used to watch four of the uh, the uh, the MTV kind of uh, ones. Uh, but uh, I remember even when I was young, and my teacher used to ask me, "What do you want to be?" And I used to say, "I'll either become a scientist or a businessman, because both of them can change the world." What, what, what about you? What was you wanted to be? I don't know, man. I wanted to be a, a police officer, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> with his, with his uh, glove. Yeah, yeah, I know. There's got to be some super cool cop, right? <laughs> you know, but Bollywood. Uh, Bollywood actor, exactly, you know. Uh, like the Captain America. Uh, oh, I know. 
uh, no, no, I think uh, so. My my family, uh, you know, we have uh, in in services. So I always had a passion for uniform. Yeah. This uniform now, I guess, it's more dressed up uniform than <laughs> the formal one. I I, I think uh, uh, you know uh, essentially talking about the uh, you know the essence of Indonesia. Uh, what is Venetia and what it really uh, is trying to do. Uh, something that we get asked a lot uh, by people who look at the portfolio of uh, products and businesses that is owned by Venetia as a crew. Um, because uh, it's so diverse and so wide and sometimes uh, it's difficult to connect the dots. But uh, the way we look at it is Venetia is an engineering enterprise. Uh, our goal is to bring engineering and technology and sciences to build knowledge for future, to disrupt the status quo of orthodox businesses, the way they are doing the hand on working right now, uh, and to solve real life challenges and real life problems uh, that we can with the help of sciences. And that is how all of these dots sort of connect, uh, whether it is healthcare or it is technology or it is financial services, whether it is banking, whether it is, uh, you know, brokerage and financial intermediation, it is all an effort to use sciences and technology somehow uh, to recreate, uh, you know, the, the, and solve the modern day problems. Pretty intense for you for that, isn't it? See, <laughs> <laughs> and you were with the Wikipedia guy, right? Yeah, you were more intense than that. At, at the time when he was talking, I was, I mean, I was slightly confused. I was like, this guy talks a lot. Yeah, <laughs> but then then I went through the uh, editing and everything, and I listened two, three times, four times, five times, and I'm like, it's genius, you know. And that guy is, and the beauty is that he knew that if he monetizes his product, he'll kill his own product, and he chose not to be rich. Yeah, not and yeah, I'm saying not only specifically for Wikipedia, just just all the stuff that he was saying. Yeah, no, it's like he's genius, but you 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 have to listen to it several times yeah, no, right. to realize it. You know, 